Shalom Aleichem, Agud Vok. We are embarking on the special day of Yud Beis, Yud Gimel Tammuz. So we'll continue with a story with the Sat Merav, and uh, we'll go from there. And basically, this happened in 1948 at the wedding of Rabbi Avram Tzvi Landau. This is the Lubavitcher Landau family of Crown Heights, of S. Lewis, the Landaus. Rabbi Avram Tzvi was Zoycha to live a hundred years, and uh, he was one of the Shanghai Talmidim. He actually was born in Galicia to a Hasidish family, and during the 1930s, he made his way, he, he was sent to learn in Pinsk. There was a Navardika yeshiva there, and he made his way to learn there. And it's a story for another time, how he came from the Pinsky Yeshiva to the Lubavitch Yeshiva in Vilna, and how he became a Lubavitcher. It's a very interesting story. We'll leave it for another time in Mirza Hashem. But in 1948, his Kala was the daughter of the Marik, Reb Yitzchak Klein, who was a Hungarian Jew, and had an association and a closeness to the Satmer of Reb Yel Teitelbaum, who came to America in the late 40s, 47, and he became friendly with him there as well. So when his daughter mar was marrying Rabbi Landau, Rabbi Avram, Avram Tzvi Landau, he came to the wedding. And there's actual a picture of it that's been publicized. That's the, 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 the background of that picture. Something that is not known that Rabbi Sro Landau, his son, shared with me last week, and I thought it would be appropriate to say Dove B'Shem Amroi and to share it with everyone, is that the the custom in their circles, in those Hungarian circles, is that by the Badekanish, when the groom goes to greet the Kala, the bride, which is the first formal step before the chuppah. It's called the Kabbalah Sponim, and it's a very significant moment, and it's not to be made light of. So at that time, they don't have the chosen putting the veil over the face of the kala because of tznius. That's their, their tradition. The Chabad custom is for the Chosen to put the veil over the of the Kakala's face. Rabbi Landau wanted to follow the Chabad tradition because he became a Lubavitcher already in 1940 and he was a Lubavitcher Chosid. His Shver, his father in law, the Marik, Rabbi Yitzchak Klein, was adamant that, listen, I'm basically, you know, in charge here. You know, he, he was paying for most of the. The, the wedding and and it's his turf and this is his minig and it's his daughter and we're going to do it my way so someone else will put the veil over the kala so Rabbi Shmuel the Vitten was there and he and Rabbi Lando who was close to him asked him what to do so Rabbi Shmuel said I'll take care of it when the Satmarov comes into the wedding hall I'll talk to him <clears throat> And so it was, he went over to the Satmarov and he presented to him the Chiluki Deis, the difference of opinion between the Chosen and the fa future father-in-law. And the Satmarov, without the blink of an eye, said, do what the Chosen wants. And the Pail, he was the one who put the veil over the Kala. So I share the story because we have this picture that's circulating and we know about the family this part was not known. I didn't know this till this past week. And it's a very important piece of uh, information. Why? Because the Satmer of he, 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 he said things and did things that people thought 
he meant this, and he really, he really meant something else. And I documented a lot of this in the book that I wrote on Satman and Lubavitch. If you really want to understand what I mean, you need to really read that. For example, in 1963, when the Rebbe spoke about President Shazar, Zalma Shazar, that oil in the Gdullah, the Rebbe quoted the Gemara. The Satmarov got very upset, and he was in Saratoga for uh, during uh, vacation uh, for his health, <clears throat> and he was visited by another cousin of his, another Rav, and the the cousin saw how he just was he was burning inside. He was so upset. So he says to the Satmarov, he says, let's make Afghan, let's make a protest. And then the Satmarov says, Mephedish not, no. And he didn't explain himself. He was calculated. He knew when he wanted to have gone and when he didn't. But after his major stroke in 68, 279, to his passing, the uh, underlings of all sorts took over and decided many things in his name and uh, positioned him, although he did come out and he was functional on a, on a certain level. But nevertheless, the uh, powers that be were very much in control. Another proof is that in 1970, they made a Afghana, they made a protest by the UN, and he was against it, he gave no permission, and then he said, you should write all the names of the people that were there and put it on the doors in Williamsburg, the Satmar Base Medrash, and they were listed as the Schwarze Satmar. Could you imagine embarrassing them in public, because their names were on the door? What's my point? The point is that his calculations were very different the way the Ahmadabar, the average person, understood it. So when he tells uh, Rabbi Shmuel Levitin, go ahead, and the Chassan should do it, I'm sure he had a reason for it. He didn't break his tradition, the Hungarian tradition. I would assume and think that since this was the Chassan's prerogative, you follow the Chassan. I, the father-in-law, is the big macher here, and 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 and, and the kala, and it's in their turf from Williamsburg or wherever the wedding was. But they, you know, kind of had the, you know, the friends and guests. Rabbi Landa was a bocher, and Nebuch, he lost everything in the Holocaust. So you know, wouldn't you side with the father-in-law and the kala? No. And this also is the connection to Yud Beis and Yud Gimel Tamuz, that when we talk about standing up, if something is right, if something needs to be done, I'll be told you have the Mesidus Nefesh and you stand up in face of politics and in face of friendships and in face of Hanifa, you know, buying someone off with money and with favors, you stand up and you say it, and you say it with Stolzkeit. That's what we learn from Yud Beis and Yud Gimel Tamuz. Everyone should have a, a great week. A liberated week, a Gaula week, we should talk to see Mashiach Sitkana because of Mamsh.